Nag, nag, nag. That's all Linda says she hears, sometimes from her ex-husband, Ron. So why is she even listening to all of his barking? Well, it's because these two are actually considering another run around the track together after having been married once before for 18 years. In fact, there is only one issue that could put an end to wedding number two for Linda and Ron. Take a look. Ron and I were married about 18 years, and we got our divorce. We reconnected in March. We're considering getting married next year, and I'd like to get married in Hawaii on the beach. I hadn't seen Linda in two years. The big problem that I've had is convincing Linda that she needs to get to the doctor, that she is not well, because I don't want to be divorced again. I was diagnosed as having rheumatoid arthritis a couple of years ago. And I do not like taking prescription medicine. I feel that having a prescription cocktail isn't good for my body. I think you might be in a little bit of denial. It's putting a strain on the relationship because I'm, in her words, nagging her to go to the doctor and take her medication. He nags me a lot. You know, when's your appointment? Where are we going? Who's it with? What's it for? I'm afraid. And what I'm afraid of is I'm going to lose you. Well, Linda and Ron are here with our good friend, Dr. Frida Lewis-Hall, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer. So welcome. Appreciate Thank you being here. <laughs> now, these two were married to each other before, divorced two years ago, and are now planning to get married again, right? That's yeah, correct. That's correct. But you're worried about her now because... I was thinking about uh, Linda an awful lot, and well, I thought about her a great deal during the two years, to be honest with you, but um, I felt like I needed to go there, so I made an excuse, and I went over to the house, and uh, she answered the door, and she had lost 30 pounds. I lost 30 pounds in two years. Her hands were swollen mm -hmm. with the arthritis. You suffer from rheumatoid arthritis. Yes. I didn't have it before our <clears throat> divorce. I mean, all these things kind of happened within that period of time that we were separated. But she refuses to take her medication. Well, that's been a problem. And Dr. Frieda, you've heard this sort of thing before. Oh, yes. Um, and you know, there are a whole range of reasons that people have for why they don't want to take medication. And being nervous about the risks or concerned about the risks is a very common one. And people should be concerned about the risks of medications because all medications um, have risks, um, by the way, including natural medicines, right? So anything you put in your body can um, have a risk. And the important thing is to understand what those risks are. Um, the one thing that people don't often think about, though, and Linda, I think you all are experiencing that now, is what is the risk of not taking a medication? Um, so a disease like rheumatoid arthritis can progress over time, become worse, and sometimes can do irreversible damage if not treated properly. So the key is understand the risks about the illness and not having treatment for it. Understand the risk of the treatment options and then weigh those. Um, that's the conversation with the doctor. You know, you're the captain of your healthcare team. Uh -huh. It sounds like you've got a really good member on the ground, you know, on the ground team for you. And to build a really good healthcare team that you trust and are willing to have these honest conversations with is important. Your doctors, your nurses, your pharmacists, um, your nutritionists, um, your rehabilitation specialists. So all of these people are a part of the team that you lead, right? And so you want a team that you trust. Uh -huh. And you want to be really educated about your diagnosis so that you know information and you're asking really good questions. Write them down. Make sure that you've got the right list before you go in there. And then also write down your concerns. What are the things that are bothering me? What are the things that I'm worried about? And that's the conversation you have with your healthcare team. Yeah. You, you really have to educate yourself ahead of time. You can read things on the internet. You can, and I, I love GetHealthyStayHealthy.com. Healthy, you can get so much information there that will prepare you for that doctor's visit. You, you can go there uh, and see what they have to say about it here and make a list of questions that you may want to take in to the doctor's office as well. And, you know, there are many other reasons why people don't take their meds. One is, you know, I don't intend to. I don't have a plan that I'm comfortable with that I plan to follow. 
But there are a lot of things that even if you've got a good plan, make it difficult. Sometimes people just plain don't forget. Mm -hmm. Or um, they're taking a number of medications and prescriptions and they may get confused. Uh, the second thing is complacency, or what I call the fade. And that is you have a disease that doesn't either have symptoms or um, you feel better. I'm like, I don't need to be bothered with that because, you know, because I feel fine. And then side effects. You know, side effects are often very real and they keep people from uh, either taking their medicine or taking it as prescribed. So it becomes really important to always tell your healthcare team the side effects that you're having. Do not change your medicines unless you've had that conversation with your healthcare team. 20 to 30% of prescriptions don't get filled in the first place. Like, I'm just not gonna do it. And then half, a whole half of medications for chronic illnesses don't get taken as prescribed. You can go to gethealthystayhealthy.com and there are tips there for how to have these conversations with your doctor, mm -hmm. questions to ask, and also uh, ways to help you be um, more adherent with your healthcare plan. Okay. Educate yourself so you make an informed decision.